Remember Pixar games? In the 90s and 2000s, where cynical cash-grabbing license games were the norm, Pixar's offerings were a more than welcome break. From Toy Story 2 to The Incredibles to Up, these were consistently pretty stable genre games, doing justice to their source material while providing entertaining experiences in their own right, even after the films released. Who knew that Remy was fever dreaming about flying fruit while he slept, or that Woody learned to skate around toilet bowls in between films, or that the employees of Monsters Inc. under Sully's leadership create laughter exclusively by throwing dodgeballs at each other while they work? Wait, what? Hey, Dad. Yeah? I think there's something in my closet. Oh, don't be silly, there's nothing in your closet. <laughs> Monsters Inc. Scream Arena was a GameCube game released in 2002 where you play some dodgeball and create some laughs. This is one of the only pieces of media set in the Monsters Inc. universe after the events of the first film to be tragically retconned with the release of Disney Plus's Monsters at Work. The Star Wars Extended Universe was one thing, but decanonizing the Pixar trash tier spin-offs is a step too far. In the interests of game preservation, and to show Radical Entertainment's most beautiful mistake, I want to talk about it. And you know, this game had an alright fan base. Fun fact, it was the best-selling GameCube game in May 2018, with a few speedruns and... Wait a second, there's not a single co-op speedrun. If only I could find another Monsters Inc. fanatic who could join me in becoming the number one Scream Ring and a co-op speedrunner by default. <laughs> oh my god, is that broadcast journalist Alexander Greensmith? <laughs> Put that thing back where it came from, or so help me. Hello and welcome to Speedrun Attempts. We aim to be the, the world record holders by default. We will be the world record holders by default. For how long? That's up to you to decide. Please, please, please don't watch this game and then play through Monsters Inc. Scream Arena co-op mode and beat our record. Considering this game was a rush job for the DVD release, I've been surprised by the character and fluidity in the game's animations and cutscenes, which includes some FNVs of the movie itself, and some decidedly worse animations for this new title. But it reaches the goal of the game as it gets you, albeit uncomfortably, laughing. <laughs> Dude, you are uh, doing alright there? The game's intro is premised as a corporate ad for the new Monsters Incorporated, detailing how the new business harnesses laughs instead of screams, and their method for doing so, which is just dodgeball. Everything is dodgeball now. Because, of course, if in the dead of night two monsters just storm into your house, start throwing inflatable balls around, bloody hilarious. Also a hearty laugh are the range of destructible environments, all taken from scenes in the movie, such as the reception, the changing rooms, or Harry Harryhausen's sushi bar. What it lacks in making sense with the premise of the story, it makes up for with being a fun and creative set of arenas. Personally, I like to play dodgeball flinging shit out the window of Sully's apartment while he's playing. May the best monster win. <laughs> <laughs> so creepy. Oh, God, it's brilliant. Also, why does Sully have a picture of Mike in his apartment? I don't have a picture of you in my house. The trees look pretty good. I've been yeah. playing some Scarlet Sword recently and they look the, better. The trees, than, yeah. The trees yeah. actually look better. That's. I'm not I mean, going to mention Pokemon Sword and Shield. Balls We've only ever played this game in linear order. We, never, we don't play it for fun, we just play it to beat it. Sort of we thing. play it for. For gamer points. Yeah. For gamer cred. And well, gamer score now that we're playing and, with Xbox. And frankly, gamer score. I can't remember why I bought this game. Maybe it's Sully's shit-eating grin on the cover, or Mike's Tory power stance, or to experience an array of special balls, each with a unique ability. And if that doesn't sound like a fun Saturday night, I don't know what will. For true gamers, a quick glance through the manual should set us up for this world record smashing attempt. Everyone sure seems... feral. Time to take in all the truly wacky dodgeball battles. Looking good. But what we really need is a rundown of the character select. Ah uh, yes, my favourite, uh, Bob Peterson. Needleman. What can be said? Needleman is small, but a bit slow, and his low power ranking makes him less than ideal for most encounters. But hey, he is funny to look at! That is one brutal CEO performance review. For the sake of this video, we'll be represented by our main man George, who was the guy from the 2319 bit. And Schmidt, who was the guy from the, uh, thing. Yes! It's our boy! <laughs> it's my character! Sorry, Mike. Okay, right, now we're gonna be the dream team. Okay. George and Schmidt, really. If you wanted to see how Claws plays, if you wanted to see how Randall, or Sully, no. We'll do a speed, okay, come on. 
Oh, it's this game. You yes, said. I did say it. It's the magic ball. <laughs> yeah, but come on. There's a lot of magic in this game. <laughs> what I wish we could do, though, with the groceries is run up to him and take a dodgeball, but sadly it's not been patched in. But, uh, you can hit years him. Later, you, wait. you can hit him. Yeah, but, but why would you, want, why do you want to do that? It doesn't do Why would you want to do that? And also, you just have to like live with yourself. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, it, there's a real disadvantage to hitting him in-game, because you have to live with the guilt. Don't have life lessons while playing hit Pixar games from the early 2000s. Yes, yeah. hit. Uh, what do you mean shit? <laughs> nah, this game gets a lot of hate. While the game modes are all fairly similar, and easy to abuse broken mechanics, the real variety comes from the breadth of balls. You've got laughter balls, cock and balls, and the uncomfortably long-lasting disco balls, which paralyze your target into boogieing down for three seconds too long while the game continues around you. Why? There's so many great dancers, you can make a top five dancers! Nope, that's a terrible idea. Oh no. The excessive effects these have are what keeps the game fresh and replayable, while their exclusivity to individual levels is what gives each of them a sense of their identity. The balls and their various free will disabling status effects are also where the main difficulty ramps up, alongside CPUs suddenly alerting to no-scope you with perfect precision from across the room. The sharpness of the difficulty spike is certainly a problem, although it might also be due to the fact the game only takes a couple of hours to beat, or, if you're really good, 1 hour 19 minutes. Uh, first watching home, this is the door walk strap. Yeah! Mike, like, should not be happy with this. Everyone's throwing balls, like, look at his girlfriend, <laughs> yeah, but he's just letting it happen. It. He's cowering in fear. <laughs> he's a ball himself, and he's using a ball to defend him. You don't really need strategy, really. <laughs> this is called the stand in the hut strap. <laughs> Monsters in Hoot Hut. Okay, I can bring this back. I can bring this back. You I can? can. You're against Noodle Man. Okay, we're not going to bring this back. <laughs> And if we could just take a brief pause to appreciate the soundtrack. Despite the hardcore violent gameplay, these subdued tunes keep the mood mellow, with a similar style to Cuphead with their jazzy instrumentation and fast pace. The mood is, however, in stark contrast to the gameplay, which is, as opposed to regular dodgeball, pretty hardcore. Brawling to the death, or at least another life, in a street or a restaurant with a relentless barrage of just balls everywhere. Monsters Inc. You can leave the arena, but the screams will never go. Bob Peterson, you're going down. <laughs> Bob, this is it. Game game. It's the end of your game. We've basically seen most of the characters, but of course, there's one big unlockable character to come. Yeah, there's one big twist. Mm. A bit of a weird choice, to be honest. But, I know. And it's poorly. We don't even know which way the toilet flushes, because we don't know what part of the world Monsters Inc. is set in, right? Okay? We... Stay in our own domain. We know that the dancers are funny in this game. <laughs> We don't know which way the water flows, all right? That's beautiful. The character roster includes some bizarre choices. Absent are film classics like Roz, Celia, The Abominable Snowman, or Water News, to make way for Dentius, CDA agent, and Boo, the only female character included, all of which are unlocked after various special challenges throughout the experience. The final level and largest difficulty spike is on the laugh floor, with various tough obstacles only top tier bug exploiting can see you through, and the very final mission pits you against Boo for some reason, which after several arduous attempts we finally cleared, and are rewarded with a brand spanking new set of wacky alternate skins. This is how you'll look. This is how you'll look sleeping on overlooked 2002 GameCube licensed party dodgeball and Monsters Inc. Scream Arena. Big ups also to the CDA agent in biohazard suit, in a black tie suit, and the justification for Claus's inclusion, his holiday Santa Claus redesign. And how could we forget Viking Needleman? He is, of course, still funny to look at. Oh yeah, go on, Smitty. All right there, sir. Look at how you doing? Dentures. Look at Needleman. Look at Dentures. Dentures is a meme. The main problems we had with this game were that the physics were often extremely janky, especially when dealing with hit detection after a status had been induced, and you'll have basically seen all the content within an hour or two of playing, although that's hardly a problem nowadays given the game fetches like two quid used online, so who even cares how long it lasts you. You get to see Schmidt in a cowboy outfit after you beat the game, so I think I know who's winning. And for the price it's currently going for, you could certainly do a lot worse than this baller dodgeball in party action bonanza, perfect for children and or drunk or stoned adults. So that was Monsters Inc. Scream Arena. Could we say it was one of the unsung hits of the GameCube? Don't care. I've said it anyway. And as the reigning world champions of Monsters Inc. Scream Arena any percent co-op speedrun on speedruns.com, we can confidently say, that's yeah, alright. At least it's better than Melee. 
Thank you for watching our video. It's been in production for over three years since we found it in the back of my cupboard, so you better like, comment, and subscribe. And you can watch the whole speedrun on Alex's channel in the description. The perfect afternoon treat to make you say, Lampers coming out on the floor.